at 16 personally. That's how I feel right now. Even at 16? Yeah. Did you multiply times C? I did. Okay. Two times 10. Oh, 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 actually. I'll solve for X, sorry. X. Yeah, that was, yeah, 16? Yeah. Two point one one seven times ten to the negative fourth. Ten to the negative what? Fourth. Uh, that that's probably can't be right. Yeah, that's not right. Huh? Did you multiply it by two right there? Yeah, I did. Oh God! Oh, I did. I messed it up. Never mind. Negative four point two three times ten to the negative eight. So negative 43.3 nanoseconds. All right. X3 prime T3 prime equals 16 meters. Negative 43.3 nanoseconds. All right. So what's happening here? From the barn's point of view, the pole is coming at them. As soon as that left end clears, both barn doors close, and then 7.7 .7 nanoseconds later, the, the right end smacks into the right side of the barn. From the pole's point of view, the first thing that happens is the right door closes. Boom. Then the pole smacks into it. And then the left door closes. Because that barn's gotten smaller, you, it makes sense that if I've got a 16 meter pole and I've got a basically five meter long barn coming at it, the right side is going to smack into this before the left end clears this. And intuitively, this is nothing like anything that I have experienced in real life. Well, it's not just 20 meters, though. Pardon? From, from the pole's perspective, this is in this calculation there, um, that the right door closes at 20 meters. Double checking this to make sure. No, no, 20 meters. Um, oh. because the right side is 20 meters away from the, the pole. Let's see, we have the, from the left end, that's it. This is the reference point right here. When we established, at this point right here, okay. that's when the left door closes, that's when the left end clears, right. and so those are synchronized, and so it's the distance from this spot right here. Okay. So, when, The second one was when the when the right door closes. So the right door is going to close when this end, from his point of view, is 20 meters away. Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like your question is not been answered yet. No, it, it is. Okay. Yeah. I wonder what happened to the person. Are they paced? I'm going to assume that if we could get a person and a pole up to that speed, that we have the technology to keep them from getting splattered. 
or if the pole is made of strong enough material, it like decimates the right wall and they don't hit anything. That's true. Somebody posted something on Facebook about distances and they said if you're traveling at the speed of light, you get to the moon in one second, get to the sun in eight minutes and so forth. And they said if you're traveling at the so I commented. If you're traveling at the speed of light, then the time everywhere else is passes infinitely. And no time passes for you. So by the time you got to the moon, it wouldn't be there anymore. Because it would have disintegrated. That's like everything in the universe would be gone. And then I followed up with a line of, is it relatively fun? Line of paper. Uh, questions? All right, let's take a break, stretch legs. All right, so, so basically cars cruising on the highway, you're in the way back, there's your station, in the very, you know, the last compartment, again, no seatbelts, they're just rolling around. And you throw a ball to your brother who's in the front seat, so relative to you or the car, the, the ball is going at 20 miles per hour. The car is going at 70 miles per hour relative to the road or the earth, ground. How fast is the ball going relative to the ground? 90 miles per hour. Yeah. So we can formalize this because, you know, that's what we do. So the velocity of, oh, we'll make that the positive direction. If it's exactly 70, it's exactly 40. The velocity of the car with respect to the ground is 70 miles per hour. The velocity of the ball with respect to the car is 20 miles per hour. And what I asked you to find was the velocity of the ball with respect to the ground. Whenever you're adding vectors, if you keep the convention of object and reference, so object the first, so the velocity of the first letter with respect to the second letter. Yeah, that was. Isn't it not quite 90 miles per hour? Because if, just hypothetically, if you're going at 90% speed of light and you throw something in front of you at 20% speed of light relative to you, it's not going to go faster than the speed of light. All right. Uh, that is correct, and that's where we're headed. Okay. Uh, you're right, if we took relativistic effects into account, it'd be at these speeds probably 89.9999999. You know, a bunch of nines. It'd be so close that we're going to call it 90. Okay. So if I'm trying to figure out the velocity of the ball with respect to the ground, it's the velocity of the ball with respect to the car plus the velocity of the car with respect to the ground. This is basically vector addition. As long as these two letters here are the same, it is valid. So if I have any other, so some vector uh, A with respect to B, it's gonna be that same value A with respect to C plus C with respect to D. So no matter what the vector is, if I have those two letters are the same, it's valid. In a similar respect, Subtracting is, you would just flip the letters. So this would also could be written as VBC minus VGC. So if I flip the reference, just it's, the sign becomes negative. So right now, I walk towards the door and the door is coming at me at, uh, we'll make that the positive direction. The door is coming at me at say five miles per hour. But from the door's point of view, I'm trapped, my velocity is negative five miles per hour because I'm going in the negative direction from the door's point of view, the door's going in the positive direction from my point of view. All right, this is 90 miles per hour is classic Galilean relativity, but as Alex said, it doesn't quite work when you get up near the speed of light. So let's actually take a look at that. So instead of ground, I'm gonna call this S. 
instead of car, that's prime. The 70 miles per hour here, I'm gonna call V. This 20 miles per hour, I'm gonna call W. Make sure that's the letter that I want to use here. consistent with my notes, I'm going to make this U. And so this is W from S prime's point of view and U from S's point of view. So writing it in sort of this format, what I have is that the velocity of S prime with respect to S is U. The velocity of the particle with respect to S prime is W, and the velocity of the particle with respect to S, the, like some particle that's moving to the right, is, that came that way, is V. All right, so these are just three different speeds, three different velocities here, how fast the rocket ship is going, how fast the ball is going relative to the rocket ship and how fast the ball is going relative to Earth back home. So, uh, if I do the velocity of P with respect to S, that would be the velocity of P with respect to S prime plus the velocity of S prime with respect to S. Again, those two are the same, and so this is a valid sum. Now, W, that's how fast this particle is going, or whatever we're shooting in the rocket ship. This is how fast it's going relative to the rocket ship. And so that is just some distance over some time. And that is, which I'm just going to assume we've synchronized it so that the initial position, initial time are equal to zero. And so this is going to be gamma x minus vt over gamma p minus v over c squared x. Uh, sorry, that should be u. So basically translating these three what the person on the rocket ship is measuring into what people on Earth are measuring. Uh, divide by time. So then I take that and multiply by one over time. Take that and multiply by one over time. Gammas cancel out and I'm left with x over t minus u over one minus u over c squared x over t. What's x over t? Speed. one. Uh, so whatever you're shooting, whatever you're parking. With respect to who's which reference frame? The ground. Yeah, okay. In that particular scenario here, it would just be equal to V. Okay. So this becomes V minus U over one minus U V over C squared. Because so again, you got this X over T. If this were Galilean relativity, we don't have to, T is the same for both of them. The distance that was actually traveled is the same for both of them. If this were Galilean relativity, this would be V is equal to W plus U, or W is equal to V minus U. Notice 
that's basically what our numerator is when we bring relativity into it. And so if you're trying to remember, all right, so which one goes where? Is it a plus, minus, which comes first? If you set up the Galileo relativity one, that tells you how the, well, the special relativity one happens, and then this sign right here is the same as that sign. All right, so let's go through, change this. You're in. Back of rocket ship, which is going at beta is equal to point eight down the interstellar highway. With respect to Earth. You throw a ball to your brother who is in the death seat, sure we'll keep that there, and you're throwing it at 0.6 times the speed of light with respect to the rocket. How fast is the ball going with respect to Earth? 1,000. We just can't add them straight up like we did before. What I am asking for here is VBS. So my equation, I know that V, because I'm asking for V here, V equals W plus U. So I'm good with that. Divided by one plus U, W over C squared. Again, set up the Galilean relativity, which tells me what the signs are going to be and what the letters go where. And then that sign is the same as this one. The numerator here is just those two letters right there. And so W was the speed of the ball with respect to the rocket, which is 0.6 times the speed of light. So this is 0.6C plus the speed of the rocket with respect to Earth, which is 0.8C divided by 1 plus 0.6c times 0.8c over c squared. The numerator 1.4c, denominator 1.48. Just express the answer in terms of C. You don't have to actually give me meters per second. Point nine four six C. Yeah, that's what I got. All right. So beta is point nine four six. And thus, despite what you were told uh, growing up, 0.8 plus 0.6 is not 1.4, but 0.946. Okay, there's a lot more context to it, but. What I would like to do is derive equals mc squared. Which means there's basically three more derivations to do. I could do it two more derivations, but one of them, one of the derivations that I want to do will simplify one of the, the what I used to do. Uh, 
I know that this is not exciting math, but I, I still I think it's cool that just with the math that you've learned, such incredible information is coming from it. So what I'm going to do is to split it up just a little bit. I'm going to do one derivation, and then uh, we'll, we'll do some wrap up, and then we'll finish it on Wednesday, and then we'll presumably it won't take the entire two and a half hours on Wednesday. Uh, then we'll do the relativity lab. We will not be getting in a rocket ship traveling near the speed of light, so sorry. Although you would find out what the future is like here if we could do that. However, depends on how fast we go, it's possible that everyone you know could be dead by the time we get back. So we just went through the derivation of, I got my S frame, frame, my S prime frame, and we just did objects traveling in the direction that S prime is going in, everything's good there. But now suppose I have a, an, uh, something that's traveling in this direction. Suppose that is the velocity of the object. Well, we got this horizontal component here, which would satisfy what we just did here, be satisfied what we just did. But this perpendicular component, that's what we need to deal with. I know that this is true, it's already written up here. So I want to figure out what is the velocity in this direction right here. So I'm going to call this uh, yeah, v sub y and v sub x. What is the relationship between velocity and position? X being position. If I gave you position, how would you find velocity? Distance divided by time. All right, except we need to use a little calculus here. Take your derivative. Yes. So V sub X is the XDP 